this kid is a serious contender for the best in the world. He won the only global championship that we've ever had in Smash. Of course, that being the 2GGC at the end of last year. He just won the Battle for Vegas event as well. Or no, Nara won that. Yeah, Nara won Nara that. Won That's Nara. right. But he played him in Grands is what it was. Yes. Yep. So, you know, oh, and then won Genesis. He certainly won Genesis, yeah, man. He so he knows exactly what he's doing, man. They're certainly yeah. coming in off of a, I guess what could be looked at as a hot streak. You know, obviously every player wants to get first, but as long as yeah. you're placing those top portions of the bracket, you could try to always carry over that momentum into the next event. Yeah, he's had a pretty hot season too. After a relatively poor performance at the beginning of last season from like July to maybe September, October, um, aside from GTX, of course. But he has come back very strongly. Actually, though, with still a, a couple of strange losses, he got fourth at a tournament in Mexico recently, losing to Javi and Rox. Okay. Rox, another young gun from Mexico who has yet to travel out of the country, but he plays MK and Sheik. Let's People are calling that. him like the hybrid of, of Leo and Javi. Mm -hmm. But let's not forget about his opponent, who is an absolute beast in his own right. Best player in Texas. That's going to be Lima. These guys have tangled before at Canada Cup, actually, in the grand finals. I, you yeah. know you were there. Yeah, man. I think I was sitting right next to him, if I'm not mistaken. That is the case indeed. And we see Leo defaulting to Marth in this matchup. He's tried everything, even a corn out of his pocket. Yeah, yeah, we've seen that as CEO. Yeah, we got a little bit of corn, man. I remember that. Yeah. We've seen a lot of these matches by now. Yeah, we absolutely have, man. That's one of the beautiful things about Smash 4 as we move into the next game, and it's getting the viewers at home familiarized with some of these crazy characters. Okay. Okay, gets the down throw. I like that, man. You know, Sakurai, I remember reading an interview about uh, how he kind of designed the human characters in Brawl and how he designed them to have weaker throws. And at first I thought, man, that's kind of whack. But then I realized, man, in low percent, you do some crazy stuff with the human yeah, characters in yeah. these throws. I'm rocking with it. I actually had never seen that. It's really interesting. Oh, Lima is actually Whatever. just a savage. Yeah, he's just out of control. You know, I think that's just what he does when he comes to Canada. He just shows out, man. Like, remember, who did he play? I think JW. What? JW, that's right. <laughs> We're never going to forget it. Never. I'm never going to let him live that down. And then the craziness, he brought it like Spacom when he played Larry Lurie. He's like, yo, man, this kid can kind of do everything, and that's what makes him scary. <laughs> He's definitely terrifying. He and Mistake both share this trait of just being unpredictable, wild, sassy players in and out of the game. Love having them around. These oh, kids, yeah. they keep it fun. Oh, but this is potentially Lima's kill? No, not at all. Leo, definitely much more rehearsed Smash DI than when we first saw him have some trouble against Bayonetta players. Yeah, you know, I think that might have just been a Mexico thing. They just kind of struggled against the characters that they don't get to play against as often. But as history shows, he has a pretty good record right now against a lot of the top Bayonettas in the yes. business. Okay. Definitely the Bayonetta Slayer, for sure. Okay. But Lima not looking to be the next victim. Love the up air into back air combo. Ooh, so close to a dangerous situation for both of them, but instead it's gonna be Lima going out. I think he lost his jump during that up B and yeah, didn't ran out quite of gas. process it. Yeah. yeah, ran out of gas just a little bit too late there. All right, MK Leo starting off this match on a strong leg here, if I may say so myself. Going to Marth of all characters, you know, we've seen a lot of characters from him in the past. Uh, we've seen Cloud. We've actually seen a Bayonetta come out on his yeah. behalf as well. I think we've seen sure. that Ed battle for Vegas. We got a little bit of Bayo, um, but that seems to be uh, not at this point. You know, Marth seems to be the character for him to get the job done. Yeah, for some reason, he's just found the most success with this one. Despite not being as high tier as Cloud, of course, I think Marth is very comparable to him in terms of overall strength in this game. And for this matchup, I think having the more reliable recovery and a Dragon Punch style move would be really valuable. No, I said it once and I'll say it again. I feel like Marth, if utilized correctly, can be more dangerous than Cloud, being able to have basically a limit at his own disposal if spaced proficiently. Yeah, of course, and also the jab game. Something Cloud lacks Strong is normal. a set of good ground normals, exactly. Now, if only Marth had a slide to break yeah. zones, woo hoo, baby. <laughs> but uh, I'm not getting any crazy ideas. Okay, catches the dive kick, a beautiful stuff, takes the platform away from him, forcing him to snap ledge once again. Lima getting a little dive kick happy here. Not exactly sure what's going on, but oh my god, MK Leo just having a ball right now. Love how he's converting the weak hits into the tippers. That was weak bear, weak up air, tipper up air. Now we see this game end really quickly if Lima's not careful. Push to the edge here. Okay, he's gonna get the tipper bear and Leo in prime position. Gotta say, I'm curious as to why he is not even attempting the edge guards here on Lima, just respecting him very much, but I guess he doesn't want any chaos. Yeah, you know, a lot of times we'll see him go off stage and go for like counter to try to catch like the to try to catch like the uh, witch twist or like the afterburner kick for the most part. But you know, he's putting a lot of respect on his name here, and that seems to be cost for him at this point, you know. Tossing out that up air, you know, 88%. 
Obviously, you're in a deficit, but this is Bayonetta. You know, one conversion, you can certainly be back into this. Rare hesitation there from Leo on the heel slide. Looked like he was thinking about what to punish with. Of course, there's a lot of things you can get that with. Up smash for Mark works great. You could just get a simple grab. Uh -oh. But I think he's... I like that. Yeah, he understood. Yeah, keep throwing out all those moves, man. You're going to experience some crazy ending lag. <laughs> Okay. Love that. Downer. Challenging Hops with the downer on the way down, yes. Covers such a wide range. Even though it's got a lot of landing lag, mm -hmm. I like that Marks are going for that more, just not letting them get juggled for free. Oh, he's going to delay it. Oh, try to delay, get the final hit there on Dancing Blade. If he went up, that was Kurtz. Lima bringing himself slowly but surely back into this set here. Oh, I was going to say, you know what Leo wants, and that is an up throw. Any way he can get this done is good, but one that doesn't lose the witch time is even better. Okay, we're starting to see a lot of empty hops here from Lima. Finds an opening here for back air. Oh, oh. MK Leo with the most pristine air dodge I've seen all weekend. It's one thing I've got to commend about Leo's playstyle. He's so good at using his jump and air dodge off stage defensively. He often, even with Cloud, we'll see him jump outward almost to his death to air dodge. But it makes it really hard to chase him like that. That it does. And that okay. up throw is, oh, yep, definitely on the table. Okay. Now, I kind of feel like, and feel free to correct me, I kind of feel like Lima was sort of sandbagging. Like, he just, like, went into high gear towards the middle of that match. But in the beginning, he kind of let MK Leo have his way with him. And that's something that I thought was just really, really strange to see. I don't know, man. Uh, Showboaty as Lima may be, I don't think he's stupid enough to sandbag at this stage of the tournament. But I, well, no, I would, no, I would hope not. No, yeah, you're right. You're right. No, yeah, but I would hope not, man. I hope that's like not a part of some like unforeseen meta where you just like let your opponent think that they're gonna <laughs> run away with it, then yeah. at the tail end they just like this is even my final form. But who knows, man? You don't want to get JW though. No. Oh. <laughs> nah, man. A man dies a legend for that. Yes. Oh, okay. I feel like he's he seen mistake world, do it. He's yeah. like, I see mistake, dude. I'm gonna try it. I'm scared that that may have killed like 10% higher too. Smashville is a cruel mistress. Now he's all the way out. Oh, smart by Leo to not go for the counter. A lesser mark like myself would have tried that. A lesser mark. <laughs> smart of Lima, though, just going right up to the ledge. Okay. I like what MK Leo's doing right now. Despite, you know, Bayonetta being such a phenomenal character off stage, still making it very difficult for the Umbra Witch to try to recover herself. Okay, the fastball back here. A little late there on the trigger. Oh, yeah, we punished those. Delayed Dancing Blade, see you later, homie. Called the Leo Blade for a reason. He is so consistent with timing that. Something that a lot of people had trouble with, or at least had trouble figuring out before Leo popped onto the scene or started using Mark so much. Uh-oh. What do you have for this? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be up smash, but Ooh, no still not. I, wow. Very interesting, you know, Bayonetta is get you in that which time, and there's like the sense of confidence that they have, like, got you where I, right where I want you, but, uh, you know, maybe MK Leo kind of threw for a loop, there was some strong DI, or maybe, you know, Lima just didn't really have the time to charge it up all the way. I love Lima's recoveries. He's seemingly always ready for that counter, whether he's waiting it out or just going above it. Smart stuff, because that's kind of the brain-dead way to edgeguard Bayonetta in this matchup. Good. Like the Lynch gameplay right here. You know, we've seen this in the last game. You know, MK Leo has the lead, and Lima starts to turn things up and brings it back, but I don't want to say it's too little, too late. Oh, had he caught that up tilt, Max? Smashville actually getting in the way of his combo there. It almost helped him out big time before. Oh, I thought he had that roll miles away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wants to snap ledge. And again, you know, this Smashville platform seems to be home here for Lima. You know, certainly not camping, but I think when the pressure gets too thick, he doesn't mind retreating up there to try to alleviate some of the pressure and get things figured out. Oh, no forward throw, though. That was all that landing lag from her specials. Otherwise, I don't think he would have died at 77, but it would have been close. Another Leo blade, but not quite enough to do the job. Smart, knowing that Lima has a tendency to go for that ABK to get off the edge. Basically all that oh. dude, it's so good. Okay, gets the jab, but then pops up a little bit too high there for the forward air. But if at first you don't succeed, try it again. MK Leo handing Lima an L there as he moves right into the next round. That was crazy. All right, so we're going to be seeing MK Leo tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Bright and early, 11 a.m., by the way. And before we get into all that, we got one more set for the night, folks, and it's going to be a sick one. Oh, we yes. have two extremely strong players this season. Uh, this is, I'd say, their peak, both of them for sure. First being Wadi from Virginia. Best Mewtwo in the business. In the business, man. Yeah. Yes. Res